every time you become aware that you're doing that and your body is craving those emotions and you settle it back down into the present moment, you're telling the body it's no longer the mind, that you're the mind. And now your will is getting greater than the program. If you're not being defined by a vision of the future, then you're left with the old memories of the past and you will be predictable in your life. And if you wake up in the morning and you're not being defined by a vision of the future, as you see the same people and you go to the same places and you do the exact same thing at the exact same time, it's no longer that your personality is creating your personal reality. Now your personal reality is affecting or creating your personality. Your environment is really controlling how you think and feel unconsciously. Because every person, every thing, every place, every experience has a neurological network in your brain. Every experience that you have with every person produces an emotion. So some people will use their boss to reaffirm their addiction to judgment. They'll use their enemy to reaffirm their addiction to hatred. They'll use their friends to reaffirm their addiction to suffering. So now they need the outer world to feel something. So to change then is to be greater than your environment, to be greater than the conditions in your world. And the environment is that seductive. So then why is meditation the tool? Well, let's sit down, let's close our eyes. Let's disconnect from your outer environment. So if you're seeing less things, there's less stimulation going to your brain. If you're playing soft music or you have earplugs in, less sensory information coming to your brain. So you're disconnecting from your environment. If you can sit your body down and tell it to stay like an animal, stay right here. I'm gonna feed you when we're done. You can get up and check your emails. You can do all your texts, but right now, you're gonna sit there and obey me. So then, when you do that properly, and the, you're not eating anything, or smelling anything, or tasting anything, you're not up experiencing and feeling anything, you would have to agree with me that you're being defined by a thought, right? So when the body wants to go back to its emotional past, and you become aware that your attention is on that emotion, and where you place your attention is where you place your energy, you're siphoning your energy out of the present moment into the past, and you become aware of that, and you settle your body back down in the present moment because it's saying, well, it's eight o'clock. You normally get upset because you're in traffic around this time. And here you are sitting and we're used to feeling anger and you're off schedule. Oh, it's 11 o'clock and you usually check your emails and judge everybody. Well, the body's looking for that, that predictable chemical state. Every time you become aware that you're doing that and your body is craving those emotions and you settle it back down into the present moment, you're telling the body, it's no longer the mind, that you're the mind. And now your will is getting greater than the program. And if you keep doing this over and over again, over and over again, over and over again, just like training a stallion or a dog, it's just gonna say, huh, I'm gonna sit. And the moment that happens, when the body's no longer the mind, when it finally surrenders, there's a liberation of energy. We go from particle to wave, from matter to energy, and we free ourselves from the chains of those emotions that keep us in the, in the familiar past. And we've seen this thousands of times. In fact, we can actually predict it now on a brain scan. Yeah, I, we have a huge frontal lobe and it's 40% of our entire brain. And most people, uh, when they have a thought, they just think that that's the truth. And I think one of my greatest realizations in my own journey was just because you have a thought doesn't necessarily mean it's true. So if you think 60 to 70,000 thoughts in one day, and we do, and 90% of those thoughts are the same thoughts as the day before, and you believe that your thoughts have something to do with your destiny, your life's not gonna change very much because the same thought leads to the same choice, the same choice leads to the same behavior, the same behavior creates the same experience, and the same experience produces the same emotion. And so then, the act of becoming conscious of this process to, to begin to become more aware of how you think, how you act, and how you feel. It's called metacognition. And so then, why is that important? Because the more conscious you become of those unconscious states of mind and body, the less likely you're gonna go unconscious during the day. And that thought is not gonna slip by your awareness unchecked because you're, it means to know thyself. The word meditation means to become familiar with. 
So as you become familiar with the thoughts, the behaviors, and the emotions of the old self, you're retiring that old self. As you fire and wire new thoughts and condition the body into a new emotional state, if you do that enough times, it'll begin to become familiar to you. So it's so important, uh, just like a garden. If you're planting a garden, you gotta get rid of the weeds. You gotta take the plants from the past year and you gotta pull them out. The rocks that sift to the top that are like our emotional blocks, they have to be removed. The soil has to be tenderized and broken down. We have to, we have to make room to plant a new garden. So primarily, we learn the most about ourselves and others when we're uncomfortable. Because the moment you move into that uncomfortable state, normally a program jumps in. When that program jumps in, it's because the person doesn't want to be in the present moment and engage it consciously. So when you teach people how to do that with a meditative process, it turns out that when they're in their life, they're less likely to emotionally react. They're less likely to be so rigid and believe the thoughts they were thinking. They're more aware of when they go unconscious back into a habit, and that is what starts the process of change. And so we have to unlearn before we relearn. We have to break the habit of the old self before we reinvent the new self. We have to prune synaptic connections and sprout new connections. We have to unfire and unwire and refire and rewire. We have to unmemorize emotions that are stored in the body, and then recondition the body to a new mind and to a new emotion, like deprogram and reprogram. That's the act, and it's a two-step process. Yeah, and that's, it's a, it is a danger because then people will will shrink back into mediocrity and they'll use the insight to excuse them from taking a leap. They'll say, yeah, you know, I have a chemical imbalance in my brain. Yeah, my father was really overbearing. He was a perfectionist. That's why I am the way I am. You know, people, they, they come up with stuff to, to excuse themselves. The insight is actually giving them permission to stay limited. And it's, 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 it's an amazing idea because they'll say to you, that they really want to get over their anxiety. But let's, okay, let's take your ex-husband, let's put him in a straitjacket, let's duct tape him and shoot him to the moon. Now what? I mean, what are you going to do now? You still have to make those changes. And so then when the person's enemy dies or uh, something shifts in their life uh, and that person's gone, they'll find another person to hate. This is just how we function as human beings. We just slide another uh, reason to feel those emotions. So. I think, I think when people start to understand this, you know, I, I think knowledge is power, but knowledge about yourself is self-empowerment. Well, let's talk about it in terms of survival or creation. As I said, 70% of the time, people live in stress, and living in stress is living in survival. Now, all organisms in nature can tolerate short-term stress. You know, a deer gets chased uh, uh, by a pack of coyotes. When it outruns the coyotes, it goes back to grazing and the event is over. And the definition of stress is when your brain and body are knocked out of balance, out of homeostasis. The stress response is what the body innately does to return itself back to order. So you're driving down the road, someone cuts you off, you jam on the brakes, you may give them the finger, and then you settle back down and the event is over and boom, now everything's back, back to normal. But what if it's not a predator that's waiting for you uh, outside the cave, but what if it's your coworker? sitting right next to you and all day long you're turning on those chemicals because they're pushing all your emotional buttons when you turn on the stress response and you can't turn it off now you're headed for a disease because no organism in nature can live in emergency mode for that extended period of time it's a scientific fact that the hormones of stress down regulate genes and create disease long-term effects Human beings, because of the size of the neocortex, we can turn on the stress response just by thought alone. We can think about our problems and turn on those chemicals. That means then our thoughts could make us sick. So if it's possible that our thoughts could make us sick, is it possible then our thoughts could make us well? The answer is absolutely yes. So then what are the emotions that are connected to survival? Let's name them. Anger, aggression, hostility, hatred, competition, fear, anxiety, worry, pain, suffering, guilt, shame, unworthiness, envy, jealousy, those are all created by the hormones of stress. And, and psychology calls them normal human states of consciousness. I call those altered states of consciousness. So then we tend to remember those traumatic events more because in survival, 
you better be ready if it happens again. That's, and, and when the survival gene is switched on, you could have 10 really great things that happen to you in your day. And you just have one bad thing that happens and you cannot take your attention off that bad, that, that unhappy thing because the survival gene is switched on.